system uh, in a district plan requirement made by a requiring authority. It authorizes requiring authorities uh, to carry out work and activity on a site or in an area or quite often on a, a, a route, for example, the state highway network, without the need to obtain a land use resource consent from the relevant um, territorial authority. A key point there is that uh, if you require a, a regional plan consent, um, you can't rely on a designation to achieve that. You would also have to get a regional plan consent, and that's for things typically like um, diverting water courses, damming water, um, in some cases earthworks, um, air discharges, those sorts of things that we call regional plan provisions. They are in the unitary plan. A designation does not um, uh, sort of bypass the need to get consents for those sorts of things. Click that on, not working. Uh, okay, so only requiring uh, for land and requiring authorities are uh, Minister of the Crown, so any of the Crown ministries. Um, any council can be a requiring authority, and Auckland Council is a requiring authority, or net network utility operators approved under Section 17667 uh, of the RMA. So there are a list of network utility providers who are requiring authorities who can use this technique of a designation um, rather than obtaining uh, land use resource consent. The other thing that a designation does is it provides some sort of protection from those um, uh, ministers of the Crown, councils or network utility operators from anyone else undertaking an activity that might prevent that typically piece of infrastructure happening in the future without the requiring authority giving the approval. Um, it, it does give the requiring authorities that benefit. Next slide, please. So in terms of the um, proposed plan that went out for submissions to 2013, most of the designations were simply rolled over from the seven um, operative district plans. Uh, there were some, some of the designations that were rolled over were um, modified. That's the term from the RMA where the requiring authority is seeking some changes to the designation, um, changes to the conditions that might apply to that designation. So there were some designations that were modified at the request of the requiring authority. When we put the plan out for submissions, prior to that we had to write to all requiring authorities asking them um, if they wanted their designations to roll over uh, or roll over with some modifications or if they were seeking any new designations. And the last point there is that we did have a small number of new designations uh, that requiring authorities sought to be included in the plan that went out for submissions. Uh, so that there are 53 new designations that went out for submissions. As you'll see, the majority of them were for Auckland Transport. Uh, taking the opportunity to designate um, public off-street parking. So some of the uh, car parks were designated in the um, council car parks, were designated in the operative district plans, others weren't, so Auckland Transport took the approach of um, applying to designate all th uh, an additional 36 off-street car parks. Uh, there was one road widening um, proposal by way of a new designation, and then we have counties power for Glenbrook substation Minister of Courts for Henderson Courthouse, New Zealand Rail Railways Corporation for the Manukau Rail Link, which wasn't um, designated. And then we've got three substations, the Highbrook Business Park transmission lines that some of you may be familiar with, have seen on the landscape out at Highbrook there, and six Victor substations. So those are the new ones, but the vast majority were rolled over without any changes. So the panel... Um, is required to make recommendations on all of the modified designations. So even if there wasn't a submission, if the requiring authority was seeking some changes, the panel had to assess those and make some recommendations to the council. They have to make recommendations on all of the new designations that were on the previous slide. And then for the ones that were rolled over without any change whatsoever, and that's the vast majority, the panel is only required and must only make a recommendation if there had been a submission on those rolled over ones. So that sort of limits the scope of uh, the panel's um, recommendations in terms of those ones that are simply rolled over without any changes. Next slide, please. So, the panel's recommendations, they were received on the 18th of May. Um, we're not expecting any other recommendations from the, uh, the panel until the 22nd of July. 
uh, which is where the bulk of the recommendations will come. Uh, and there were three um, designations where the panel is still doing a bit, a bit of further work on uh, landing its um, position in terms of what it will recommend to the um, council. And that's a, a, a late Kiwi Rail designation that the panel accepted through the process. Auckland Airport, um, because of its relationship with um, the zoning at Auckland Airport and other provisions in the, in the plan, uh, our understanding is that's the reason why that one is still um, held back. And there is a, in, a New Zealand Transport Agency designation at Newmarket Viaduct. Um, it's not for a new viaduct or anything like that. Um, it's to do with signage, um, as I understand it. So that one is still um, to be received. Uh, all of those recommendations were put on the council website 25th of May for any submitters or members of the public to see what the panel is recommending. And as I mentioned, we'll get the balance of those um, designation recommendations on the 22nd of July. So in terms of um, council's decision making, um, council must notify its decision on all of the designations on the 19th of August. In terms of the council's own designations, particularly for the, um, essentially for the regional parks, uh, council makes the final decision, um, but it does not make the ultimate decision on the other requiring authorities like New Zealand Transport Agency or Transpower. Uh, we receive the panel's recommendations. We make what's called in the legislation a decision, but the final decision is then made by the requiring authority. So we sort of make a decision, pass it on to the requiring authority, and they will decide whether to um, accept or reject that and make the final decision. So just the timelines, 19th of August uh, is when the council's decisions will have to be released on its own designations and its decisions on the other requiring authorities. Then we have, um, and there will be a comprehensive report coming to the committee uh, on the 12th of August for the committee meetings to consider all of the panel's recommendations, but there will be a, a standalone separate report dealing with designations because they are quite different to the rest of the unitary plan. Uh, 30th of September, that's when the appeal period expires for appeals against the council's decision on its own designations. On the 30th of September, uh, we also receive um, the panel's, um, sorry, the requiring authorities um, decisions. And then there's a, a um, 21st of October, that's when we have to notify submitters um, and occupiers of land affected by other requiring authorities' designations of their final decisions. So there's quite a bit of sort of process involved here. <laughs> um, and then 5th of December is when the appeals close on decisions that aren't the council designations. So that's the kind of timeline. It is a bit complex. It's different to the rest of the unitary plan. Um, and as I say, we'll have a more comprehensive report dealing with the, the issues um, in August. This is, this is more presentation on the process and just a bit of an overview of the, the new designations that were in the plan. Interesting. Sorry, can Next I just step? let... Um, so, <coughs> who, who can appeal? Sorry, I'm being a bit dense here, I think. It's a lot to take on. <clears throat> uh, it might be useful if so is the enough. appeal <laughs> for the Oct But essentially, um, uh, anyone who submitted right. um, can appeal. That's a starting point. Um, just in relation to the, the panel's, um, sorry, the council or the requiring authority's decision on that point. So they can't do a sort of broader appeal. It has no, to no, be no, to I the point that. raised in their submission. But Karina, have you got more? Sorry, the, the question was who can appeal? So who, so um, council designations or other designations? Others. Well, both really. <laughs> well, it's um, owners and occupiers <coughs> of the land that's affected who have made a submission on it. Okay. So, so the council can also appeal in relation to. Yeah. Others we can also appeal. Uh, we, I mean, we can appeal the ultimate final decisions of. Transport Agency or Auckland Airport or County's Power, okay. Council can appeal? Yes, so we, when the governing body makes its decision on the designations of other requiring authorities, that becomes a recommendation that goes back to the requiring authority, who then makes the decision which the Council can then appeal. Okay, uh, I mean, I'm trying to use something simple like probably the road designation or something like that, would it be? Yeah, okay, thanks. <coughs> 
Right. Councillor Webster, Councillor yep. Cooper. Yep. Sorry, so um, just... And I'll take it to something I know. Um, the Henderson Courthouse, which we know is currently not owned by the Ministry of Justice. <coughs> so they're putting a notice requirement on that. So effectively that's sort of putting an owner on notice that we might want that at some stage. Is that kind of... I mean, it's the same with roading or education land, isn't it? Whether they own it or not, they can do that? Yeah, a requiring authority doesn't have to own the land. They just have to have the resources and the, um, the authority, or I guess, or the, the mandate to deliver that infrastructure or courthouse or whatever it might be. So, um, but they don't have to own the land at the time. It's, it's often done to sort of protect land for the future, but obviously the owners of that land... at the moment. They currently lease it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you. Okay. So that'd be the owner that could appeal that. Or if that building could say... Marina mentioned before, if, yeah, the owner, if they were a submitter, yeah. or... Yeah, they have... But do they have to be a submitter? Yeah. We'll just Would they have been notified, that. obviously, before... They would have yeah. been notified, yeah. Thank you. Okay. The requirement on council uh, back in September 2013 was to notify <coughs> owners of land affected by new designations too. or modified mm -hmm. designations. Thank you. Not the rolled over ones, otherwise we would have notified yeah, tens and tens of thousands of people. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councillor Casey. Uh, there's something I don't understand, John. If, if this council doesn't have any power on the designations of other authorities, yeah. why are we even looking at them? Why are we boring? Why don't the independent hearings panel just take them straight to the authorities? Because it doesn't matter what we say, they'll do what they want anyway. It's, it's just a step in the legislation that does allow the council to um, do a review and potentially recommend something different to the requiring authorities, but I think we would... Um, probably have to be there have to be a very significant reason to do that um, given that the panel heard all of the uh, any evidence they heard they ran the but hearings so they've looked at it very carefully so yeah it's, it's a step in the process a step in the legislation um, you know come August we'll know a bit more about what we staff might recommend but um, there is an opportunity for the council to recommend something different to the panel yeah but how would you do that if you haven't heard the evidence and blah blah? Yeah, it's it's that's what they do. It's well, just it's just open in legislation to, to do say it, we can either accept or reject is kind of mm. a bit ridiculous because we can't reject unless we go through a rigmarole that we haven't been through. I don't know if Karina, if you want to add anything there. I mean, it's. I think we might. Yeah, I think what people are, <coughs> are grappling with a little bit is a. The, the point of the whole process and B, <coughs> what, what, are the, what are the safeguards that, that council has against kind of ludicrous designations and C, how do we just understand, just go over very quickly again, the, our points of decision making. <coughs> All I was going to add, um, Madam Chair, was that this is exactly the same process as any designations right now, even if we weren't doing unitary plan, um, that the, the RMA does provide for um, a process for requiring authorities to enable them to do what they need to do. Council always has limited roles in that, but there are, in certain circumstances, as John has said, <laughs> There are appeal rights, but effectively council just makes a recommendation to them and they make the decision on what that ultimately looks like. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Councillor Casey, well, shall I go to Councillor Clo and then see if you need to know any more, Councillor Casey? So your um, chart peters out prior to 5th of December. After it. <coughs> 5th of, after the 5th of December, yeah. they come back when? And when is the final thing locked in? For these designations, um, if there are no appeals on other requiring authorities by 5th of December, then they're locked in so, at that point. Yep. yep, so that's it. And if there are appeals? If there are appeals, then as with any appeal, it will go through potentially a mediation process with the yep. appellant. Uh, council may be involved, yep. and, and then it may go to an environment court hearing if, if someone appeals. One but of these. Yeah, the panel doesn't get another bite of the No, chair. the panel is not involved after yep, um, 22 July. Yep. Yep. And we have no ability to control the timing of the environment court. 
Councillor Cash. Oh, we'll go Councillor Cash from Councillor Casey. Just a bit of a pedantic one, John, but if there's multiple designations in one physical place, gas, motorway, um, high voltage electricity, is there, is there a precedence order or how is that handled? It's probably a bit of a legal question as well. It's usually the first in, um, is in the best position. So the first designation in place, the other, anyone designating on top of that has to get the approval of the original. Original submit. Original and, um, yeah. Don't know if that came up as an issue in these hearings at all. It, it did come up as an issue where we had overlapping designations, so it, it does happen, and, um, and it's the first, first up, best dressed sort of approach. Really, but it doesn't prevent the overlapping. Mm. But it certainly requires the original uh, 